Merry Christmas, Central. We are so glad you're joining us this year for our online Christmas Eve service. And we're just excited to have a moment right now really to just celebrate Jesus, to celebrate his birth, really to celebrate love come down, God's love for us. And so tonight, we're gonna spend some time worshiping. We're gonna have a short devotional. We're gonna see a video. And really, it's all about just celebrating Jesus' birth. We want to let you know that we have our Connect card right now on all of our platforms. You can let us know that you're watching our service, but also this is an opportunity for us as a church to pray for you and to minister to you. To Central, right now, wherever you're at, however you're watching this, we're going to invite you to worship.
This evening, we thank you for good news that Christ the Savior is born. 
God, just as you promised, you sent your son into this world. And God, tonight we, we're here to celebrate that truth. That while our world was in darkness, while we were caught up in sin, while we were separated from you, you had a plan to redeem, to save, God, ultimately to give us hope. And so this Christmas Eve, we hold on to that hope, knowing that you're good and knowing that you sent your Savior for us. God, we thank you so much for Jesus. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Well, Central, one of the things that I love about our church, we have an incredible kids ministry and we have a special video we're going to show you right now uh, for our kids and, and featuring our kids so we want you to check out this video right now So we asked you guys to come here today because we have a really, really special job for you. Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, we decided we want to write a Christmas song like no other Christmas song, but we need your help. So we're going to ask you some questions and then we're going to use your answers to help us with our Christmas song. All right. Really important question. We're going to start over on this side. Why do we celebrate Christmas? Because it's Jesus' birthday. And I think um, we celebrate Christmas because um, because um, Jesus was born on Christmas Day, and that's when um, he had his birthday. What are some things that you do with your family to celebrate Christmas? Um... To do that, um, I like to gather around and have a party and have a feast and open up present that my cousin gives me. Um, we get our Christmas tree. Um, I think in, we got it today. Uh, we got it in Pennsylvania, I think. Um, I like, we bake cookies and we watched, um, me and my dad watched the <laughs> Christmas vacation. Get presents and hang up our stockings. Um, my mom has like a little tree with bags on it. it goes with this um, Jesus storybook Bible. And each day we read like a different story in there. The best gift you ever got. Uh, um, the best gift I ever got was a big piano from my grandpa. My favorite um, Christmas present from last year was my art set, a Lego set. I don't have a favorite Christmas present, but I do have a fa favorite birthday present. It's my camera. The best one I've gotten before um, is an art kit. If you were invited to a birthday party for Jesus, what gift would you pick out for him? The Bible. A big Lego set. Oh, oh, I know. Um, I'll give him um ticket to go see a play about him. I would give him the Bible and zillions of dollars. Um, some clothing. Some clothing. Just What's wrong yes. with the clothing he has? Regular clothing. I don't like it. <laughs> I want him to have like Christmas colors.
bake a bunch of cookies and open good things. We thank her for the gifts that we get each year. Like a piano and Legos and art set gear. Also for a camera that I got on my birthday. But the best gifts of all we save for you. For Jesus' birthday, we get him great gifts. The biggest Lego set and a pass to your play. The Bible, Christmas clothes, and zillions of dollars. Those are just some gifts we'd give to you. Happy birthday, Jesus, it's your birthday time. We're thankful for the celebration we're having tonight. We wrote this song to make it clear that this time of year is about you, you. Well, by now, I'm sure that you've heard the Christmas story a dozen times or more. Although the Christmas story is prophesied in the Old Testament uh, several times, hundreds of times, we really have in the New Testament only two detailed descriptions of the birth of Jesus Christ that's found in the Gospel of Matthew and also in the Gospel of Luke. So you've heard these stories time and time again. And if I'm transparent with you, I can tell you that as a pastor, sometimes it's difficult to try to tell you the same story in a new and creative way. Sometimes I I get this feeling that I need to preach the sermon while jumping on a pogo stick, you know? This will be exciting, you know? I know that sounds silly, because it is. As I begin to reflect upon the Christmas story and reading through the passages of scriptures, I realize that this story is not to be improved upon. That's right, it's simple, but yet profound. It's one of those stories that that really grabs hold of our heartstrings, because in it we find true hope. So this morning... I decided to just preach uh, on a topic that's different from the Christmas story. I'm going to preach this message on the tithe to Melchizedek. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. It's Christmas Eve, right? I can't preach on anything else but Christmas, right? Uh, I mean, it was such a joy to watch that video of the kids talking about Christmas. If I'm honest with you, I was kind of impressed on, on them answering the questions that were given to them. You know, the question was asked, why do we celebrate Christmas? And, you know, they gave the right answer. Uh, They talked about the fact that this was all about celebrating Jesus' birthday. It's all about Emmanuel, God, with us. So I'd like to pose a question to the adults. I want to give you a question that might uh, cause you to have to think a little bit. And that question is, is, is why did Jesus come 
in the first place? Why did Jesus come in the first place? Think about it for just a moment. Why was Jesus born? Well, I want to give you the answer, and probably in an area of the Bible that you would think would be unlikely that I would find the answer. And that is in the book of Galatians. That's right, the book of Galatians. When the Apostle Paul writes to the churches in Galatia, he's writing not to one specific church, but a number of churches that he had planted on his first missionary journey with Barnabas. He's writing this letter to Lystra, Antioch, Iconium, and Derbe. He's writing to these people who had embraced the good news of the gospel. They embraced the message of Jesus Christ. But now the church had been infiltrated by these people that the Apostle Paul calls the Judaizers. These were these legalistic people who really wanted people to believe that if they were going to become a Christian, a bona fide believer, they would have to complete all the laws of the Old Testament, all the laws that were given to Moses, even the ceremonial laws like circumcision. So the Apostle Paul does something here in this letter. He tells them the Christmas story to give hope to those who are trying to work for their salvation. That's right. And we're going to look at it today in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Look at what the Scripture says. He says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. That's the Christmas story. That in the fullness of time, God sent his son. It's the fullness of time, meaning that this was the right time in history for this baby to be born. It's the right time for a number of reasons. It was the right time spiritually. The Israelites had been under uh, foreign occupation for several years. First, it was the Assyrians, and then it was the Babylonians, and now it's the Romans. God had not spoken to the people of God for 400 years. And this was the right time because God now begins to place in the heart of mankind this craving to see the Messiah and the King. The wise men were looking for the king, the people were looking for the promised Messiah to come. And when John the Baptist steps on the scene, they even ask him the question, wait a minute, are you the one? It was the right time, not only spiritually, but the right time culturally. See, before this time, Alexander the Great had basically put together a plan that would enforce a common universal language throughout the land throughout the entire region, and that language was Greek. It was said that a person could travel in what we know as India all the way to Britain and speak the same language, Greek. It's not by coincidence that the Apostle Paul writes the New Testament in Greek because he knew that people would be able to understand this news. He, they knew that people would be able to embrace this new idea and it would be spread freely it was the right time culturally. It was also the right time politically. See, during this time, the Romans had enacted what's called the Pax Romana. And this was basically an agreement with the people that they could have freedom of religion. They could have freedom of thought in believing whatever they wanted to as long as they would pay the tax and as long as they would keep the peace. And the government would then provide you with a certain amount of protection. During this time, there were 260,000 miles of paved roads that would weave its way throughout the entire region. And then they would post a Roman guard every so, uh, every so uh, number of miles to provide safety for people who would travel on these roads. So just think about it. It's the right time politically because now these new ideas would be able to flow throughout the regions quickly in the fullness of time. 
See, this was the right time for the good news to, to take place. This was the right time that this baby would be born. In the fullness of time, God sent forth. That means that he already existed. See, Jesus is the pre-existing one. He is the second person of the Godhood. And it said, in the fullness of time, God sent us, born of a woman. He needed to be born of a woman because he had to fulfill his promise. Way back in Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned, it was God that said in Genesis chapter 3, verse, 6, verse 15, that it would be the seed of a woman that would crush the head of the serpent. And so this child needed to be born, the seed of a woman. So how do we know that he was the one? Many babies were born during that time. But when Jesus grew up, he demonstrated his, the power of God. He demonstrated the wisdom of God. He demonstrated his ability uh, over the natures of God. He demonstrated his ability to fulfill the laws of God because he was, in fact, God. So go back to the question. Why did he come in the first place? The Apostle Paul shares this Christmas story and begins to give the answer at the end of verse 4 and the beginning of verse 5. Look at what he says. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law to redeem. Paul always described the law as the guardian. The law never was set to have the power to save anyone, but what it would do is it would help you recognize your, uh, your need for a savior. That's what the law was really doing. And this term that he uses, redeem, comes from the slave market. It means to buy back. So someone could come up with enough money and pay the price to set a slave free. So the Apostle Paul is in essence saying that Jesus came down on earth to pay the price for us, to set us free from the bondage of sin. Jesus said himself that I have not come to be served, but I've come to serve and to give my life as a payment, a ransom for many. That is why Jesus came down for us. In the fullness of time, God would now take us from being these fearful subjects, fearful of an angry ruler, to now allowing us to be children of a loving father. See, there's two types of religions that exist out there. There's one that I describe by saying do, spelled D-O. And all of those religions believe that you need to do this or do that. You need to eat this or eat that or go here or go there in order to get saved. And you never really measure up. The other way is something that I, I call done. It's spelled D-O-N-E. And this is the belief that there's a divine deliverer who has now achieved everything necessary. And so faith in that person allows us to be saved. Yeah, that's Christianity. That's what we celebrate on days like today. We celebrate the coming of a deliverer. That's what he does for us. Look at how the Apostle Paul finishes this out in verse 5 through 7. He says, He came to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, or Daddy, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. See, the Christmas story is about receiving the greatest gift that was ever given, and that was receiving Jesus Christ as a worthy sacrifice for us so that we might be in a relationship with the Heavenly Father that loves us deeply, that we might be in an eternal relationship with God. That's why Jesus 
came. We started this Christmas Eve service singing this song, Joy to the World. Joy to the World was written by Isaac Watson in the 1700s. And when he wrote that song, he was not thinking about Christmas at all. The song really has nothing to do with the first coming of Jesus. It's not about Christmas. It's actually about the second coming of Jesus. When you read through the lyrics, you'll find that Jesus is coming to rule and reign throughout the entire earth. And the Bible gives us specific details of what that's going to look like. But it's fine for us to sing that song during this season because during this season, we're reminded that he came for us. But through that song, we're also reminded that he's going to come back for us. Yeah, we can sing that song 365 days of the year. So we can sing it during Christmas. And we can sing this song to remind us that he came and that he also will come back for us. See, in the fullness of time, God sent his son to be this little baby. But one day he'll come as a conquering king. In the fullness of time, God sent us this, this child and he would eventually ride on a mule, but one day he'll come and he'll come riding on a cloud. In the fullness of time, Jesus sent his son to seek and save that which is lost, but one day he'll come and he'll rule and he'll reign. In the fullness of time, God sent his son to be placed in a manger, but one day he'll come back and he'll sit on the throne. In the fullness of time, he will come back for us and we'll rule and reign with our Savior who's given everything so that we might be in a holy relationship with him. That's the greatest gift that was ever given. And we find that in this Christmas story. But we are saved through grace, through faith, and what Jesus has done for us. For Jesus has come to us. That is truly the good news of the Christmas story. I want to pray for you, and then I want us to begin to just praise God that he's given us the privilege to share that good news. God, I ask that you would just bless anybody that's out there that may have been trying to work for salvation. Help them recognize that the Christmas story is all about you coming to redeem us, to give your one and only son so that we might be in a holy relationship with you. God, move on their hearts so that they might continue to grow to learn more and more about you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. I think what I've shared with you is good news. And that good news is to be told throughout the entire world. So we want to continue to worship the Lord. And let this be a command for us to go and share this good news throughout the world. God bless. Let's worship. Go tell it on the mountains. Over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold.
Thanks for worshiping with us this evening, and I can't think of a better song to end on, to go and tell on the mountain what Jesus Christ has done. We want to thank you again for worshiping with us. You can fill out our Connect card. Central, have a Merry Christmas. We love you so much.